Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. In this video, we will continue our lesson on describing data, particularly on the use and application of the standard deviation by way of Chebyshev's theorem. Let's do a bit of recap on standard deviation. As what we have learned before, standard deviation is a measure of dispersion. Dispersion refers to how spread out a set of data is. When a data set has a small standard deviation, what this means is that the values are near or clustered around the mean. Whereas, when a data set has a large standard deviation, this implies that the values are dispersed or scattered away from the mean. Look at the diagram on the right for some illustration. The concept of standard deviation allows us to compare the spread in two or more data sets. Take, for instance, the test scores obtained by all students in different sections in our statistical methods course. If the average score for all the sections are similar, we might say that the students equally perform across the different sections. But if the standard deviation is known, we can compare the performance of the students in the different sections. Say the standard deviation of marks for section 1 is 5 marks, whereas the standard deviation of marks for sections 2 is 9. We can say that the marks of students in Section 1 are not dispersed as much as those in Section 2 because 5 marks is less than 9 marks. Since the marks in Section 1 are clustered more closely about the mean, the mean for Section 1 students is a more reliable measure than the mean for Section 2. Having remembered what standard deviation is, so now let's move on to the first application of the standard deviation, which is the Chebyshev's theorem. This theorem was developed by a Russian mathematician P. L. Chebyshev to allow us to make a broad statement about the dispersion of a data set for almost any data distribution. This theorem is useful because it enables us to quickly estimate the minimum proportion or percentage of the values that lie within a certain number of standard deviations from the mean. This distance from the mean in terms of standard deviation is known as k. According to Chebyshev's theorem, if k is greater than 1, then at least a certain percentage of the data set will lie within k standard deviations of the mean for any set of observation in a sample or proportion. This percentage can be computed using the formula shown, that is, 1 minus 1 over k squared. Before learning how to apply the Chebyshev's theorem, it might be a good idea to see the advantages of using it. As mentioned before, one of the advantages of using the Chebyshev's theorem is that we can get good estimates rather quickly compared to calculating the actual percentage of our data that lies between two values. Another advantage of this theorem is that it can be applied to any data set. What that means is, we can use this theorem not only for a symmetrical distribution, but also for non-symmetrical ones. However, there is one condition of using the Chebyshev's theorem, that is, the number of standard deviations from the mean, or k, must be more than 1. Now let's move on to the steps on how to apply the Chebyshev's theorem. First of all, we need to find the value of k. K represents the distance of a value from the mean in terms of standard deviation, not in regular units. To find K, we simply divide the distance with the standard deviation. Once we have K, we substitute it into the formula 1 minus 1 over K squared and obtain the minimum percentage of our data set between two values. Let's try and do an example. The mean income for a sample of 75 part-time assistants at IIUM is 800 ringgit and the standard deviation is 40 ringgit. According to Chebyshev's theorem, at least 1% of the income will lie between 600 and 1000 ringgit. And how many of the part-time assistants will receive the income between 600 and 1000 ringgit? First things first, to find the percentage of income, we need to find the value of K. Okay, so to do this, we can start off by sketching the information given. What's given to us is the mean, which is 800, and we're given the two limits, the lower value of 600 and the upper value of 1000. The distance between these values from the mean is 200, respectively. Now, from this information, we can calculate k. Remember what k is? k is basically the distance from the mean, but in terms of standard deviation. So to find k, what we need to do is to... Take the distance between the mean and divide it by the standard deviation. So 200 over 40, we get 5. So the next step is to substitute this k into the formula of the Chebyshev's theorem. 
which is 1 minus 1 over k squared. And we get 0 0.96. What that means is, to interpret, we can say that at least 96% of the income will lie between 600 and 1,000 ringgit. For the second part, how many of the part-time assistants will receive this amount? All we need to do is just simply multiply the 96% from the total number of part-time assistants. 96% times 75, so we'll get 72 part-time assistants. Let's take a look at another example. Suppose a distribution has a mean of 111 and a standard deviation of 7.6. If Chebyshev's theorem tells us that 81.1% of the values are between A and B, which are symmetrical about the mean, then what are these values? Okay, to find the values of A and B, what we need to do is we need to find the value of K first. To do so, we just used the Chebyshev's theorem formula. 1 minus 1 over k squared and equal it to the percentage that's given to us, okay, 81.1% or 0.811 in um, proportion form. Okay, by using simple algebra, we shift around the unknown and we can find and solve for k and k is 2.3. Once we have k, we can also use this formula because we know k is the distance between the value of x and the mean over the standard deviation, right? So there it is. The distance is basically mean minus the value of x over standard deviation. So now we just input all the values that we know into the formula. k is 2.3, mean is 111, a value of x is unknown, so we leave it as x, and standard deviation is 7.6. So by solving for x, we can get two values of x, which are a and b. One is 93.52, and the other is 128.48. So here's an illustration of what we did just now. As you can see here, the mean is in the center, which is 111, that's x bar. Okay, the upper limit is x bar plus k, which is the distance from the mean in terms of standard deviation, multiplied with the standard deviation. So we get 128.48 here. And the other value, which is the lower limit, is x bar minus, because it's, it should be sl um, smaller than the mean, right? Minus k times standard deviation. So this is basically what we did just now, okay?